start your project by making up 12 sets of two of the 21700 cells in parallel. Although this is a 13S pack, you'll see later why you only do 12 of these in advance. The Frey M600 battery pack doesn't have sufficient space to put these cells in upright. So here you can see the cells are going to go in assembled in an end-to-end -end configuration where you have three banks that are end-to-end -end, and this will get slid into the pack. Because you need to join your cells in series lengthwise like that you have to be a bit creative in how you're going to spot weld your nickel strip on and how I've been doing it is taking one of these style of nickel strips and spot welding it on like that so that I can then fold it over. Before you fold this over on itself now is a good time to tin your nickel strip that your BMS contact point is going to be placed on. So I just take a piece of nickel and put the flux on. When the nickel strip cools down enough for you to bend it. Bend it on a 90 degree angle and then place it so that it will protrude on the dorsal side of the next row of cells that you're going to put on. Next we're going to weld the third layer to the top of these two layers. As you're progressing through your cell increments, it is probably easier to add your sensor leads as you go along. After I've added the sensor leads, taped under them and over them, and then tape the leads themselves as another layer of precaution. I'm going to use the foam sticky tape right over the joints. After I've added my capped on tape and run my sensor leads, I connected them just before I fasten that top layer down. It's not a bad idea to do a one by one test on your flat wire leads. Let's have a look at how the layout of this is going to be because now we've got this stack which is three by two and what we need to fit into our case is a three by three matrix and so with 13 series cells. So we've got here nine and when we add these three, we're going to be up to 12. And as you can see here on the bottom, there's only enough room for single cells. So what's going to happen there is I'm going to have to place two cells there. And that's going to be my positive output. And that is going to be in the middle of these two. And that's how this is going to achieve that matrix 
that we wanted, which was a 3x3 three three formation, which then can slide into the battery pack. So now, knowing that, this next row is going to be added here, and it's going to be connected from this end. So we'll be going from the positive of this end onto the negative here, and then we're going to end up over here. 12 series connections, and you can see why we didn't connect the 13th together because <coughs> the last have got to go and nest down <coughs> underneath. So they're going to have to fit positive to positive and we'll have to take our positive leave off the middle there and we're going to have to run negative over to each side of this. And when that's done and we connect our last sense wire to there, we'll have our positive output there and our negative output over there. When you've got the last series connection on, which is your 13th, you connect that negative with that negative. You'll see the strip going along here and out of the center I've got a positive lead. That's where my last sense wire goes and the positive takeoff will come off that and then down here there will be another tab for the BMS negative takeoff or the B minus on the BMS will be going to that. And when you've got everything done, the last thing you're going to do before you go any further will be once again check your flat cable going through the connections one by one and making sure that you've got your 3.6 or whatever it is that your cells are nominally charged to. While you're doing that you'll also notice if any of your cells have got an abnormal voltage readout and then you uh, can correct that before you proceed. Remember once you have wired up your negative wire on your BMS <clears throat> do that first before you make the flat wire connection. If you do it the opposite way around, if you plug your flat wire in, then you wire that up and solder it to your battery pack, you run the risk <coughs> of blowing your BMS. So that's your caveat. And then the last thing you want to do is see if the voltage out on your BMS matches the other hot side of it. And there we have 46.2 and then if we bypass the BMS 46.3 so there we go. It looks like our BMS is functioning properly. Now here's something you might wish to optionally do before you solder your main wire on to a lead like this. I prefer not to transfer the heat and solder directly on top of the cell wall. So what I've done is I've attached a pair of forceps to the distal surface of this contact point where it enters the cavity between the batteries. I've pre-tinned it with solder. The forceps will act as a heat sink in order to take the heat away from the battery contact points and out into the metal forceps. What I've done here is inserted a temperature probe lead just out of curiosity for shits and giggles to see if what the temperature might end up being on the forceps a little bit further up say about uh, call that maybe six millimeters up from the contact. This is a piece of carbon felt and then what I'm going to do is add, as you probably know carbon felt does not transmit temperature so you can weld on top of it and I'm going to put that underneath the contact point and then bend it back down 
so that I'm now soldering on top of the carbon felt and now the temperature won't get transmitted through to the cells. By the way, just before we get started here, I wanted to illustrate the difference between a couple of my options for my lead wire. Unfortunately, I don't have any 12 gauge, which is what I'd probably prefer to use here. I only have 10 and I have a few choices in it. Down here, you can see this is an expensive silicone sheath wire and it's rated at 10. Over here I have a roll of PVC sheath wire that I got at the local auto parts store in Calgary Princess Auto also rated at 10 and this is the spool here but to my eye without using any instrumentation using a pair of calipers would not be accurate because it's only going to measure either the sheath or even if I strip it uh, all I'm going to be doing is compressing the wire strands and I won't get an accurate measurement of the diameter but it ironically seems that maybe I'll be best off to go with the cheaper wire in this case because it's a smaller diameter and it'll fit better on here and be a little easier to solder on to the contact points in the battery case which we'll see later. So the whole point of this little diatribe is not all 10 AWG wire I would uh, submit is created equal. So now we're going to add the charge wire. Here's what the positive lead wire run looks like after I've got the carbon felt inserted underneath it. Here's a last look at the anatomy of this battery pack before I get it sealed up so that you can see the logic involved. So again, we start with the initial three layers of series connections that consist of two cells in parallel connected end to end for a row of three of them stacked on top of each other again for three layers. This top layer here started out with a negative on that end. We go through and when we get to this end we have a series connection to the next layer which is down here. When we get to that end we have the next series connection which goes to this layer. That layer then gets connected to a side layer of two more or three more series connections, sorry, that go through here and then that makes up we have now got 12 series connections in total and we need one more and in order to make it fit we've had to change the layout of the cells so that these last two cells are facing with the negative terminals on the outside that's why there is a nickel strip going from that negative to that negative and the positive output is in the middle here and we've already seen which leads are connected to that and why there's carbon felt pad underneath it. Now I'm going to be ready to get this all packaged up and sealed and then get it inserted into the battery pack. When your scissors get gooed up and aren't cutting very cleanly anymore as you saw happen on the end of that one, one thing you can do is take some alcohol and wet a paper towel with it
so when you've got your double sided sticky tape all around your pack the next step is going to be to put your foam padding layer over and you can't go too thick on your foam or it won't fit into your battery box so ironically hopefully you weren't an anti-hoarder and threw out all the packing that your bike came in because this packing is almost ideal for wrapping your battery box in. One other precaution that may be advisable to do before you do get to the step of wrapping this in your foam is checking take both the ends off of your battery case if you haven't already done so and take your battery pack and make sure that it's going to fit because it's going to be a snug fit. is now going to be a super tight fit and so in order to help shoehorn it in we used to have a patrol cabin that is kind of like this situation where when we had to stay in it if there were two people you had to go outside in order to change your mind so I'm going to put soapy water on the PVC as I'm sliding it in but I'm also going to put some carbon felt underneath my battery case so I don't put an avulsion in my cutting pad on my workbench and I'm going to warm that up as well before I squeeze it on because if took the two ends off your battery case what you ended up with was this end which has just got the power indicator RGB switch on it which I'm not planning on using which made my wiring simpler so I have no wires coming out the distal end of my battery pack this is the other end where your charging connection and your power to your controller goes that's the more important one that we're going to have to solder the wires onto so for now we can attach this end to that end and you'll note that it is directional you've got this part of the channel in your battery case and then you've got a higher relief shoulder up there and then that fits on accordingly there's a gasket here's the end that you have to get to work on now now that this other end is back on the battery pack here's your charger connection here and here are your leads to the controller these spades which seem rather small to me for the amount of current but I have to assume that Frey has that figured out. So here's the positive over here when the charger is at the top facing away from you. Now you'll see there's two more spades in the middle and that's what it looks like on that side which are labeled A and B. A 
is connected to the positive side, B is connected to the negative, and the reason for that is when you plug the charger into the frame on your bike, these are what is bringing in your charge current, and then they take it over to those, at least that's what I'm assuming, and Frey did tell me that that's the way that is wired in the battery pack, and my other external pack where I built a battery eliminator out of one of these empty boxes so I could have an external battery attached. That's the way it works. So here's how I ended up configuring the wire harness for this end of the battery pack and just a reminder that could save you some grief, don't forget to run the wires through your gasket before you do this or you might end up like I did on the first pack I made if you do end up and you don't want to unsolder everything just cut the gasket in one spot and then wrap it around and it should be fine at least it was on mine so here is <clears throat> the wiring strategy the main positive comes in and connects to the outer positive lead on the pack. Then the and after all that, look what I did wrong. I've got the B minus and the P minus backwards so that I'm going to have to pull it all apart and rewire it. So what I did to recover from that stupid blunder was push the pack back again and swapped the leads around and then resolder them. So now show the wiring connections for the end piece so the red charger wire is going directly to the center pin on the charging connector on the end of the battery pack. I've got a negative lead going over to the B pin on this connector and then I've got the B pin shorted over to the main lead where we've got the output from the BMS as well as the input from the negative charger lead to the BMS. On the positive side I have the center pin of the charger input on the end of the battery pack and it's going straight in to the battery where in fact it is shorted anyway to the mains output on the positive side and then I have a and positive shorted together through this wire here. So the A and B pins are shorted over to their respective main power sources on both sides. So the final test when you have it all reassembled plug your charger in and if all goes well you'll hear the fan come on right away in the charger which means it's under load. We'll go with pounds to start with. And we're looking at six pounds. <laughs> 